In this program, we're going to look at Newton's second law of motion. It follows on, naturally enough, from Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object will remain at rest or move with a constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts on it. In other words, nothing's ever going to speed up or slow down or change direction unless a force acts on it. Newton's second law of motion gets a little more mathematical than his first law of motion and it introduces an equation. So, Newton's first law of motion says that a force is needed to accelerate something. But Newton's second law of motion actually allows us to calculate how big a force has to be to accelerate an object by a given amount. Let's take a look at it. We know that in order to accelerate something, a force needs to be applied to it. It turns out that force and acceleration are directly proportional to each other. If I apply a force to this trolley, it will accelerate by a certain amount. If I keep the mass of the trolley the same, but I increase the force, the trolley accelerates at a greater rate. A greater force causes an object to speed up faster than a smaller force does. A graph of acceleration versus force might look something like this. The more force, the more acceleration. We can say that the acceleration is directly proportional to the force. If you double the force, for example, the object's acceleration doubles. If you increase the force by 20%, the object's acceleration will increase by 20%. Now what happens if we keep the force the same, but vary the mass? When the trolley has only one green mat on it, I can accelerate it fairly quickly. If I increase its mass by loading more mats onto it, and then apply the same force, the acceleration is a lot smaller. Increasing the mass again results in an even smaller acceleration. It's quite clear that for any given force, a larger mass will accelerate at a lower rate than a smaller mass. This graph shows the relationship. As the mass gets bigger, the acceleration gets smaller. This is called an inverse relationship. We can express the relationship between force, mass and acceleration in a single equation. F equals MA. In this equation, m equals the mass in kilograms, a equals the acceleration in meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, and f equals the force that acts on the object in a unit that you might not hear every day called the Newton, which is given the symbol n. The Newton is named after Isaac Newton, of course. The equation f equals ma is Newton's second law. So let's do an example so that you can see how the equation works and so that you can get an understanding of what a Newton is. In lane six, Romil Guliev. If in the first two seconds of a race, a 94 kilogram athlete accelerates at a rate of five meters per second per second, calculate the force that is required to achieve this acceleration. Well, M equals 94 kilograms, A equals five meters per second per second, and so the force F equals MA, which equals 94 kilograms times 5 meters per second per second, which equals 470 newtons. Let's do another example. Calculate the force required to accelerate a 900 kilogram. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from episode 7 of the Shedding Light on Motion series, Newton's Second Law. If you're a teacher looking for an easy but effective way of teaching the topic of motion to your students, then visit our website to check out the series and to get hold of it. This episode, Newton's Second Law, is really made of five smaller programs that all of course relate to Newton's Second Law. We begin the program by introducing and explaining the equation F net equals MA. This equation allows us to calculate how much force is required to accelerate any given object by any given amount. We then explain, using the equation, why a dinner set moves with the tablecloth when it's pulled slowly but gets left behind when the tablecloth is pulled quickly. Next, we look at the physics of road transport. We explain why cars can typically accelerate at a higher rate than trucks, even though cars have less powerful engines. And, we examine the three main safety features of cars that protect the occupants in a head-on collision. 
We then explain why objects in freefall all accelerate at the same rate of 9.8 meters per second per second when air resistance is negligible and finish with a brief explanation of the difference between mass and weight. You can read a full transcript of the program complete with dozens of screen grabs and download the worksheet that accompanies the program on our website. So visit us today.